nothing can touch us unless our Lord allows it. And if God allows it, it's because he wants that situation to work together for our So, in the face of enormous uh, pressure to conform, because that, that's what the world puts on us, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah demonstrated the conviction of their hearts. I mean, here you got a king with all this power, and he's furious, threatening. It's enough to make anybody break down. And they stand. And they stand because they are really convicted that he is who he claims to be. We can trust him. In the face of all of this, we can, can trust him. I've just come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, as we begin to celebrate the goodness of the Lord in the life of this church, we don't have to conform to the world's idea of what church is all about. We don't have to be held prisoners to the point that we scared to worship the Lord. We, we scared to praise the Lord. When, when, when folks see us, they ought to see us pulling up pews and tearing up stuff. Why? Because of the goodness of the Lord. We, we ought not be so afraid to let the world see us enjoying the goodness of the Lord. I, I remember when I used to hang out here and there. I tell you this. I know some of y'all are going to be disappointed in. I really started not to say it this morning because I know one, two folk be hurt. But your pastor ain't always been saved. I'm sorry, I, I just, I was born jacked up. And I lived a jacked up life. I loved it too. Anybody in here? A a anybody here with me? The old Jays had a song Living for the weekend. I love me some weekend activity. Uh, I, I did. I'm, I'm sorry. And as stoic as I've always been, when I got to the lighthouse and Y'all know some of them places. The Longshoreman's Hall. I, I'm going to get your neighborhood after a while. <laughs> Everybody will sit up now and act like, now, I, I've never done any of those things. I, <laughs> the music be blasting. Huh? Folk be throwing their hands in the air. Get a little, get a little help out of the bottle. If we could do it out there. And now that the Lord has shown us the light, they ought not to out party us out there in darkness when we got real light. I know, I'm, I'm going to tell it on Sister Richardson too, she used to be with me on some of them places. <laughs> so don't y'all think that I just grabbed somebody out of heaven and married her, and she finally brought me on in, and all, we were all out there together. <laughs> and I know that y'all were out there with us. Amen. Amen. So ain't needing us acting like. But now we know him. 
And he ought to make a difference in our lives, huh? I asked the folk to pray for me last night that I would, yesterday, that I would discipline myself. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to finish at a reasonable time so I don't keep y'all from breakfast and all the other activities of, of the day. I appreciate your prayers. I'm feeling them right now. <laughs> Amen. So here they are in this situation. The furnace is right there. And the word says that, verse 19, Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury and expression on his, his face, changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. I mean, after all, he's done for them. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor. These were warriors who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They, they weren't running anywhere. And throw them in the fiery furnace. And so they bound them, and sad part is when they bound them to throw them in, they were the ones killed by the fire. Mm -hmm. Verse 24 says something happened. And, and, and I say this because Trusting the Lord is an easy thing when our faith is not challenged. But, but when your hands are tied behind your back, your feet tied together, and, and you're facing the crucible of life, can, can you trust him then? Here, here, here they are. And, uh, and, and when they were thrown in, the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rode in haste and spoke saying, to his count, Did, didn't, didn't we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? True king. He says, well, what's this I'm seeing? I, 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 I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the son of God. You, you know what Nebuchadnezzar was saying? We made this fire seven times hotter than it usually is. And even as hot as we could make it, there is a God who's yet able to keep those who trust him cooler than the hottest of fires we can come up with. In the midst of the fire, God was with them. Hmm? He said, and that fourth one looks like a God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, now, now he called them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. And the Lord presented them. Their clothes were unscathed. Nothing had touched them. What, what, what's God saying to us, little Grove? There are going to be some hills and some valleys. There are going to be some attacks from the enemy. But when you keep your eyes steadfast on the Lord, the Lord will bring us out. That doesn't mean we're not going to experience some tough times. But when we trust him in spite of the tough times, the Lord will bring us out. Hmm? You, you, you see, real faith never comes forth, is never unveiled until it has been tried by the test of life. What are you saying, preacher? You don't really know what you believe until what you believe has been challenged by the issues of life. Oh, you, you, you can talk faith all day long. Oh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I'll do this. I'll do that. Wait until you run out of money before you run out of money. Can you trust it? Wait until you send your precious little child off to school and every day you look up, the phone is ringing. 
Can you trust him? Hmm? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait until there's a desperate need for something in your life, some medical, physical healing or something in your life. Wait until you get some bad report. You, 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 you've got the big C. You, you, you've got this. You've got something that is terminal. Can you trust him? See, see, it is when, as J. Bernard McGee says, when the rubble meets the road, that the test of our faith of what we have is really unveiled. And, 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 and so when he saw this, he saw that they were truly convicted and that, that the God he couldn't see is a real God. Hmm? It astonished him. And... Uh, the sage traps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The half their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. So you know what Nebuchadnezzar did? Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him and they have frustrated the king's words and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god i i just asked a question today what god are you going to serve if we serve the one true and living god never allow any situation to cause you hmm? some of us in our marriage think that we're getting back, we, we claim to be Christians, and we think we're getting back at our spouse when we go out and have extramarital affairs because of something they've done. We've got mad with them or this and that. No, you're bringing shame and reproach on the name of Jesus, and you can't do wrong and expect God to bless you. No, no, when, when, when you feel betrayed, when you feel messed up, when you feel like your spouse ain't doing, you need to be as godly as you can be because the word of God says that when your ways please him. Amen, amen. See, see, we start focusing and we make our spouse our God and we start serving a little God who can't do anything but send us in the path of destruction. Yeah, when we get mad and we start acting foolish and doing a whole bunch of stuff, we're not hurting other folk. We're hurting our relationship with the Lord. But when you become a witness, folk may not ever like you, but they'll always respect you. Hmm? When, when, can you imagine what the folk felt like who told on Hannah and I and those? when they saw that they were worshiping the one true and living God. And, and somebody saying, well, Pastor, you, you said the blessing. What, what's the blessing of trusting Christ? God, not, not the blessings, but the blessing. The blessing of trusting God is being confident that in any situation that life places you in, the Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified no matter what the outcome appears to be on the surface. You got to know, hmm? as a child of God, that when you trust him, even though the situation can appear to be hopeless, you got to know that when you trust him, he's going to use that situation to work together for your good. And because he wants to be glorified in your life, you got to know that you know that you know that he's not going to leave you, nor will he forsake you. Oh, you may go through some stuff. You may even lose your physical life. That's not promised to you. But you got to know that in the end, you're going to be blessed beyond any measure of suffering you may have to endure. Today, my brothers and sisters, it is my prayer that you will make up your mind that no matter what I'm facing, I'm committing myself to the care of Almighty God, whose grace, even in the midst of what I'm going through, is sufficient for me. Let's pray.